Hi everybody! Welcome to another Firecast. My name is Patrick Martin, and I'm going to show you how you can use cloud storage for Firebase to upload an image from an Android app and get a web URL that you can use to download it. Cloud storage is a robust, secure, and scalable solution for storing any type of files associated with your app. In order to get started with it, you'll need to connect your application to Firebase if you haven't done that yet. You can do that by following the link in the description below. And remember that the latest version of the Firebase SDKs at the time of this recording is 18.0.0. OK, I already have a happy little app here. So I'm going to use that to work with cloud storage. Let's take a look. So this app draws the Firebase logo onto a light blue background. Then when I type text into this edit text widget, it overlays that text over the image, kind of like a meme. And there's an upload button here, which doesn't really do anything at the moment. And that's kind of boring. So let's make this button upload the image on screen to cloud storage. Before we get started, you should know that cloud storage is meant to work with Firebase authentication. Typically, you only want people logged into your app to upload files. This prevents you know, random people from dumping things into your project storage bucket. But for the sake of brevity, I'm going to skip the authentication step and get straight to the uploads. To do that, I'm going to have to change the default security rules so that writing to my project storage bucket doesn't require authentication. In the Firebase console for my project, I'm going to select Storage on the left. This shows me my initially empty storage bucket. I'll switch to the Rules tab, which shows me the default rules for new projects. These rules restrict reading and writing to only authenticated users. So you don't have to understand rules right now, but I'll show you how to disable them so that you can experiment with reading and writing without having to use authentication. Before I do that, know this. What I'm about to tell you is not safe. This is for development only, and when you're done experimenting with storage, you'll want to enable security rules again and eventually use Firebase authentication to make sure only authenticated users can write to your storage bucket. OK, back to the console. So the quickest way to disable the security rules is to simply change the read and write condition for the entire bucket to true. I'll also comment out the remainder of the line to remind me what was there before. After I push the Publish button here, I'll be able to test writing to my bucket without authentication. Now, in Android Studio, the first thing I'll need to do is to add the Firebase Storage Compiled dependency to my app's build.gradle file. The latest version right now is 18.0.0. This gives us access to the Cloud Storage for Firebase client API. You may get an error along the lines of, the app Gradle file must have a dependency on Firebase Core for Firebase services to work as intended. It's tempted to fix this by just adding the implementation Firebase Core to your app dependencies. But you should check that your main app.gradle's Google services dependency is up to date. At the time of this recording, it should be 4.2.0. OK, let's take a look at the source code for this app's main activity. There's already code in onCreate that finds and initializes the views in my activities view hierarchy. Also, I've already got a click handler for the upload button. In that handler, I'm using Android's APIs to get a bitmap of the view containing the image to upload. Then I'm compressing that image bitmap into the PNG, or ping, format. And finally, I put the raw pixels of the image into a byte array. So, what I'd like to do here is also upload that image to cloud storage. The first thing to add is a reference to the Firebase storage singleton instance. I'll store that in a private member variable near the top of the class. Next, I need to figure out the full path name of the image file to store my project storage bucket. I'm going to store these images in a directory called FireMemes, and the name of the file will be unique by using a random UUID. And as is typical for image files in the ping format, I'll add the file extension PNG. After I have a path name, I'll get a storage reference to that path using the storage API. This storage reference object is my main hook into dealing with this image on cloud storage. 
I'll use it to upload the image to my project storage bucket at the path I've given. I'll do one other thing as well. I'll attach a piece of custom metadata to the image using this builder provided by the SDK. I'll call this field caption, and it will contain the text that's overlaid on the logo. With these two objects on hand, I can kick off and upload simply by calling the putBytes method on the storage reference. I'll pass it the byte array to upload with the metadata to go with it. This method returns an object called an upload task, which lets you monitor the status of the transfer. At this point, we actually don't have to write any more code. The cloud storage for Firebase SDK will handle the upload just fine. However, we probably want to let the user know if the upload is complete. So we'll use that upload task object for that and display a progress spinner to indicate that the upload is in progress. Let's take a look at that. This app already has a progress bar widget, styled to look like a spinner. It's initially hidden below the upload button, as you can see here. So, in my upload button click handler, I'll add a line of code to make that visible when the upload starts. I'll also disable the upload button to prevent the user from uploading again right away. Thankfully, Firebase is already doing the meme upload in the background. So, in order to execute logic in the future, when this task completes, we'll let Android Studio generate a handy-dandy OnComplete listener. The cool thing about OnComplete is that it executes whether the task succeeds or fails, so you can safely use it to manage any state associated with a task in one place. Notice that I'm passing the activity instance as the first argument. This scopes the listener of the activity instance, so this listener won't remain attached if the activity stops before the upload is complete. This is important to prevent the leaking of your activity object. To learn more about the task API that you'll use with Firebase, you should check out the documentation as well as the blog series that we've linked in the description below. Now, when the upload task does complete, the onComplete callback will execute, receiving a task snapshot object that describes the results. In the success callback, I'll hide the progress bar and enable the upload button again. Huzzah! We have now contributed to the great tradition of putting text on images and uploading them to the web. We're done, and wait, how do we get the image back out again? It turns out that the secret is the storage reference object we created before. If you look at this reference page, there are two primary use cases that you should worry about when pulling content out of cloud storage. The first is that you're designing a system to host user-generated content in your app. This could include player avatars for a game, blog posts for a blogging app, or videos for your new game streaming service. For this, the API provides a wide array of calls that let you download the file directly, and the read-write rules that you've created all apply. The second use case, and the one we care about here, is that you want to generate a read-only link that you can share with anyone, whether or not they're authenticated with your app. Cloud storage for Firebase goes through a lot of trouble to make this link unguessable, much like sharing a photo from Google Photos. With all of these calls, you'll get an exception if you invoke them before the file is fully uploaded. To make it even more complicated, these methods return tasks, so their work is performed asynchronously. Normally, each task is in its own sort of parallel timeline. And like any good time traveler, though, we will use continuations to jump to key events in this timeline to get just the information we need. Let's see how it's done. There is still a lot of boilerplate code to be generated, so I'll let Android Studio do its awesome thing and write most of it for me. What we're expecting from the future is a URI. This is a universal resource identifier. And we'll want this to happen in the same timeline as the upload task after that task finishes. So if the upload task completes successfully, we fire off a request to Firebase to get the URL of the image as a URI. Then we put a completion handler on the get download URI task. And I'll let Android Studio just do its thing here. Just like our old OnComplete listener, we'll want to pass in this activity to avoid leaking resources. 
if the task is successful, we've arrived in the future with a download link to the meme. Finally, I want to display the URI as a string so the user can view and share it later. I have a handy dandy text view set up for just this purpose. You may notice these warnings about string literals and concatenation. Android and its applications are available all over the world. And Android Studio is just doing its best to bring you along for the ride. I'll ignore these for now, but you can find out more right here in the IDE. Whether or not the upload is successful, we do want to restore the UI state by hiding the progress bar and enabling the upload button again. And just in case you're wondering, oncomplete is called even when you throw an error in your continuation. OK, let's give this app a run and see how it goes. I'll type my text, then click the upload button, and we get some feedback that the upload is happening. Then, when it's done, I see the full download URL that anyone can use to view this image. If I click it here on the emulator, it'll launch a web browser app, and that will download and show the image. Now, if I go back to the Firebase console and refresh the storage page, you can see now the FireMemes directory, and inside that is the image I just uploaded. On the right, we can see some of the information about the file. Because the file ended in ping, its content type was assumed. And in the other metadata section, we see the custom metadata containing the text I typed. In the file location section, it will show me the exact same download URL I clicked in the app. If, for whatever reason, I don't want this file to have a public download URL, I can revoke the token associated with the link using the Revoke button. This will stop that URL from ever working again. I can also add a whole new download URL by clicking the Create New Download URL. I hope you're super excited about your newfound cloud storage abilities. This is just the tip of the iceberg, so we have a ton more information here to peruse at your leisure right over here in our documentation. Be sure to learn about uploading data from an input stream, downloading files, deleting files, managing ongoing uploads and downloads, and how to handle errors from any of those tasks. Oh, and don't forget to learn more about security and validation rules to protect your storage. There's nothing the internet would love more than to have an awesome way to host their own images at your expense. In particular, as an Android developer, you should pay special attention to handling activity lifecycle changes during an upload or download. The SDK gives you a way to reattach to ongoing upload and download tasks so your UI can pick up where it left off if your activity is interrupted for any reason. And that's all we have time for in this Firecast. Why don't you give Cloud Storage for Firebase a try and let me know how it works for you. You can use the comments below, or you can message me directly at Puxer on Twitter. That's with a zero and a silent three at the end. Bye, everybody!